Hey everyone, it's Wednesday evening, it's 11.35 as we speak. Nemo stretching in his box. And it's the 12th of February. So, I've uh, made a lot of progress in here since I installed that socket uh, last Sunday. Which was, what, three days ago? Um, the desk is installed as are my computers, TV, and consoles. And my Hitachi Music Center is also installed. Because I've got that fixed up and working. Touch wood. So, I'll show you the desk. Here it is. Now, the first snag I hit was the fact that the uh, the upright panels here and here and here, these three, were cut too short. And that's because I gave my stepdad the wrong measurement. <laughs> and they are actually meant to be uh, the other way around with this edge up top, which would have made the desk even shorter or lower. So I thought I'll turn them three around like that, because at least the desk would be higher, and reset them back a bit just to add a bit of style to it so it didn't look plain um, but somehow and this one wasn't my fault if you notice two end panels are actually longer than the middle three that's because somehow my stepdad cut those uh, a little longer <laughs> I don't know how he managed it but he cut them a bit longer he cut three a bit longer than these three I actually cut the third one up for a shelf over there. And the third short one. Uh, longer one. So, uh, yeah. And I was a bit worried because I thought this desk is now lower than what I'd anticipated. And I thought, if I put these computers in there, you know, there's not going to be enough room for a shelf. Because at the time I was looking at these computers over here behind me. And it just, it looked like they were going to fill that gap. Um, so what I wanted to do was actually have enough space under there for three towers like that. But uh, I made an error and put this panel a little bit too close, just by a couple of inches. But I actually found out I could put the shelf up there anyway. There's plenty of room, as you can see, so that doesn't matter. It's just storage down there now. Uh, but I am going to lower that shelf a bit more. Probably by about another inch, I think, should do it, just to give that a bit more breathing room. So, yeah, it's all working. I've got um, a six-way extension socket mounted at the back there. Um, because for a bit of rigidity when I made this, because it was swaying like that, um, I just put a board between this leg and that leg. I'll call it legs, they're pretty much legs. Um... So I've mounted a six-way outlet on there, and I've got the fuse spur cut-off switch there as well. I've got the incoming line clipped down, but I can't clip the top one, which goes out to the socket, because there isn't enough room. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can find some little sticky back clips that I can just put a couple of up there, and um, that should hold it in place. In fact, my stepdad's got a couple. I've got some, I should say. I might see if I can pinch a couple. That's all I need. I just need two just to hold it out of the way, that's all. To make it look a bit tidier under there. Um, so as I've got my DVD player and whatnot there, I thought it would make sense to put my box of DVDs, those DVDs and the VHS tapes, under here as well. So I didn't bother putting another shelf in there because it would have been too close to the floor. So I might as well just stack things up on the floor under there. I was going to put shelves in this section, but I just decided to keep it as, you know, just a cubby hole for standing boxes and things in. Out of the way. I mean, I've got the drill in there out of the way at the minute. And the console section. And as you've noticed, my big CRTV has shrunk and turned into an LCD TV. I uh, gave that big CRT TV a away. And I went with this one because it's actually on a wall bracket. So I can adjust it if I wanted. And it just frees up that whole desk. So if I wanted to, you know, I could bring both the PS1 and the Mega Drive forwards and put a Master System on there or something. I would like to get a Master System again. 
you see, I had a Mega Drive and a Master System a couple of years ago, then I made the mistake of selling them along with the game, so I actually regret doing that. Um, it's all set up, it's all working, that's my phone charger. Not that I actually use my phone. Um, the Xbox set up, PS2 is set up, why the PS2 is all the way over there, I don't know. And uh, Oh, I've got the other spare Xbox 360 under there, and that box um, is just containing some spare 360 hard drives, some PS1 controllers and PS2 controllers and a few other cables and things, and even the um, controllers and cables for the Atari 2600 are all in that box. I thought that would make more sense than trying to stuff them in the cupboard or something, because they're over here, they're with all the consoles, as it is console stuff. Um, I am going to get a slightly larger tub to put all that in, though. And I think a plastic tub would actually look better than a crappy cardboard box, and in theory, last longer. Yeah. Oh. These shelves are now over here, so I've done away with the um, cabinet that was there. And the other one that was in the corner is up on Facebook as a freebie. One person has been interested, interested in it, not interested. Actually, fun fact, I know a guy that actually can't pronounce his R's, and he pronounces them as a W. You know, someone, we, someone the family has known for donkey's years. I haven't seen him in a long while. I wonder if he's still about. Anyway. So uh, I've stuck all my PS2 games and what, well, just about all the games I've got on here. And they are doubled up, so there is a row of PS2 games behind these ones. So I've put my favourite ones towards the front. And my least favourite ones, or the, just the general crappy ones I've picked up, towards the back. And I haven't done that with the PS1 games, so I just stacked them down there. And I've got a big pile of... Uh, demo discs for the PS1 as well. Yeah, and on the end here, just to make up for the fact I haven't got the um, bedside cabinet to put a clock and whatnot on, put a couple of little shelves on the end of it, and the uh, top ones, got the phone, my landline phone and uh, remote controls on, then I've got the clock, and the other side of my clock I've got my antacids, because sometimes when I go to bed, I do get a bit of heartburn. And if I don't have an antacid, I tend to wake up with a bit of acid reflux, where, you know, where you can taste your stomach bile in your mouth. <coughs> and sometimes I've woken up choking on it, which isn't pleasant, so... Yeah, I do keep them there. Uh, yeah, I think, other than that, this is all good and good to go. I've got a couple of jobs that I still need to do, other than just tidy that cable up. Paint a couple of these shelves. That one's actually a grey, but I don't mind that one being that slight different colour, so I think I'm going to leave that one as it is. That one will get painted, that will get painted, and those two will get painted. Um, so it all matches. And then I thought, that one don't match the rest of the decor in the room now, so that's going to get a fresh coat of white paint as well. I just want to add a couple of more supports. Uh, right where we're looking, actually, sort of between... There's a support right where the Amstrad Music Centre is, and there's one right here, and I'm just going to put a couple in the middle, um, and there is a reason for that, because uh, I'm going to put my model railway layout on top of that, or the base for it is going to go on top of it, not on the wall as um, I was going to do in the first place. So, for those that may not know, the general plan for the model railway layout is to fit a baton along here and have it so it hinges on it, so I can just, when I'm, well, I'll have it folded out as a layout, and when I'm not using it, I can fold it up into an upright position, it'll latch up there, and it'll just be out of the way, and all I have to do is just fold it down when I want to model on it, or play with the trains, or whatever. And I was going to do that, so the baton it hinged on, or the baton I would fix the hinges to, was going to run along the wall. But uh, I changed my mind simply because it would be too close to the wall and I wouldn't be able to leave buildings on, I wouldn't be able to glue them down, I wouldn't be able to put trees on, 
telegraph poles, electricity pylons or anything like that, you know, lamp posts, because it would be too close to the wall. So what I'm going to do instead is actually fix the baton straight to this so I can bring it out from the wall um, far enough to clear my largest engine shed. If it can clear that then I'm good for everything else, that's all I need to worry about. So I'm going to, from the wall I'm going to come about a third in with the baton, a third of the way in. So somewhere, not quite to the end of her legs, somewhere there. And that should give me, that actually helps if I point the camera at it, doesn't it? Somewhere there, roughly. And uh, then the hinges will screw to that, and then they'd screw to the bottom of the um, layout, and Bob's your uncle, in theory. <laughs> um, yeah, simple as that. Because I want to leave, I want to leave this here for the storage anyway, because I thought it might as well, because it'll act as a bit of a support, and uh, you know, I've got a workbench if I wanted to as well. I could sit here and do some soldering or whatever. So I am planning to mount one of my many extension outlets on the front here somewhere. So I am going to put a piece of wood on there to mount it to because I haven't got anywhere to mount one to. Right. So really all I need to do up this corner now is just find a home for these CDs and I think I've found one, possibly. Um, I was thinking of putting them just right up in that corner on the window ledge. I'm not so sure now, now that I'm thinking about it, but I will, they will find a home. Um, and for those CDs, and, well basically just find a home for everything on here, so that whole surface is clear, and just take these shelves down, that is it. Then everything is ready for the base to go in, I've just got to uh, make the supporting framework for it, because it's a bit flimsy as it is and uh, install it basically <laughs> install it along there uh, but that's going to take two of us because there is no way with the framework I'm going to be able to lift that on my own I can only just manage to drag that around as it is so uh, and the fact that I've got to keep moving it from side to side to get to the bathroom in here it's like the bloody Krypton factor in here you know because I <laughs> If I want to go from the lounge to the bathroom, I've got to come out the lounge door, come into the bedroom, move this over, go into the bathroom, come back, move this back over here, and then go into the lounge. Oh, it's a pain in the backside, but what can we do? Oh, pardon me. Right. Music centres. I'm actually quite pleased. Because <laughs> uh, that one is now a working system. But before we get to that, I want to talk about this one because I put a photo of it along with the Hitachi up on a, a Facebook group. Um, it's called Turntables and Records Enthusiasts. Um, basically just asking, you know, help, advice, blah, blah, blah. Um, and probably saying any advice, welcome. Not a good thing to say on such groups because they will give you any advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although it did make me chuckle, I'll give them credit there, it did make me chuckle reading some of them comments. But the weird thing is, only one comment was about that one, and that was just saying that that, even though it's not a high-end machine, is still way better than this. All the other comments were just pointing out how crap the Amstrad was. And uh, someone left a comment on my video where I revealed these that basically said the same thing. Um, not as blunt as a lot of these comments were being on the Facebook group, but that's what the um, comment uh, on my YouTube video said. That Amstrad was known to be um, poor quality. And I can actually see that. I mean, it looks good, but that's about it. It looks nice, but there's the turntable for it. And to be honest, this, there's no weight to that. And this plastic does not feel like it's a quality plastic either. Although you may notice I've got the motor um, installed on that now. Because it is actually moving freely. I actually went to it um, about a week ago because I just found it lying on the floor. 
I started spinning the spindle with my fingers because I was fiddling with it and I thought, hang on a minute, that's not as stiff and it's not sticking like it was. So I put the 9 volt battery back on it and it spun fine. So I was like, oh, it's fixed itself <laughs> from sitting on my floor. So I thought, right, well, I'll find up three screws and I'll fit it. So I did. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, these comments that I was reading on my post about this, at first they made me think, well, I'm not going to bother with it then because it's obviously not worth anything and it's obviously, you know, so crap it's not worth fixing. So I was just going to chuck it, you know. I've got my £10 worth in that one. So I wasn't really fussed about chucking this one. I was going to take a few bits off and get rid of it. But uh, then I sat thinking. I've done a lot of brainstorming lately. And I thought, well, it needs a lot of work, including some things that I would like to try out, like making a new lid, just to see if I could do that. You know, with a hot air gun, bender, plexiglass in the shape. And perhaps refinish the cabinet in something new. Like, I don't know, fill in all the dents and whatnot that it's got in it and chips and fix those and then paint it or something. Um, you know, and actually see if I can get that in a full working order as well. And now that the motor works... And I've got it installed and wired in. All I've got to do is wire the deck back in. I can't unplug it like I can that one. I could unplug the deck from it. I had to cut the power wires on this one, which is why I've got them dangling here ready to go with a, a um, crimp connector on it. A tubular one. But now all that needs is a belt and a stylus. A stylus is actually missing from that. And the tape deck just needs some attention as well. Deck A needs attention. But uh, other than that, if I can get both of those fixed, and that would be a fully working system. It's just looking rather tatty and shabby and in need of a little bit of love. <laughs> and I thought, if I can try all this on something like this, if I mess anything up, I'm not going to be messing up something that's uh, got any value to it, am I? You know, it's uh, got no value or anything to it sitting there as it is, so... And it's a low-end machine, so it's not like a collector's going to be interested in buying it or anything. At least, you know, not for a, a decent sum of money. So, yeah, I thought, I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm not going to put some new casters on the bottom of it as well, because they're shit. So, yeah, I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to do a bit of custom work to it as well. Because, again, practice some custom work on something that's old and crappy like that. And worth nothing than trying it on something that's actually got value to it you know like a high-end system yeah I definitely want to fudge things up on that anyway <laughs> I would be so upset if I you know tried new things on a high-end machine and ended up messing it up you know and completely devaluing it or something anyway my Hitachi is now a working system. Um, it needed a new stylus which I bought and I've installed it. I actually held off about a week installing it because I didn't want to move it around this room when I was doing all this in case the new stylus got damaged so I thought I'm just going to leave it in this little protective box and put it on once I've got it up here. So I've done that. I've set the speeds as best I can at the moment. I think I still need to give it a tweak but I couldn't be bothered that day. <laughs> so um both speeds needed tweaking. Um, they were both running too slow. And the tape decks work. In fact, I gave the heads a clean with um, a proper head cleaner tape today. And uh, while I was pottering around in here and actually having a tidy up, look at this look. And she had quite a good tidy up in here, apart from the shite that's on the bed. I was um, listening to a tape today. Now that's what I call music 19. <laughs> all four sides when I say four sides there's two tapes so both tapes both sides of both tapes oh and the other thing that happened <laughs> I was cleaning the um, compartment out in the bottom there for the records and this bit of trim fell off so I've got to stick that back on but I can use my glue gun for that 
I've glued little bits of trim on like this on various things before with a glue gun that'll hold it on. It's just gotten old and just come unstuck, that's all. So, yeah, there's not a lot more to say about that. It's working great. Although, I did think I was going to have to recap the left-hand um, speaker channel, or the left-side speaker channel, because that one died. Yes, I know as we look at it, that is the, technically the right-hand speaker, but according to the back and layout, looking at it from the back, it's the left side. Um, because that was ridiculously quiet. I mean, I had the volume on at a good level, so I could hear it clearly out of this one, the right channel. But not the left. And if I cranked it right up, you could, well, that's how you could only barely hear it if you cranked the volume right up. And just to check it wasn't the speaker, I plugged this one into the left channel and got the same result. And I plugged that one into the right channel and that one worked. So I thought, right, may have to recap at least the left channel. And then I was thinking, well, if I'm going to do that, I might as well do both channels while I'm in there. Um, but for some reason, I went to it again uh, yesterday, and that one's working fine now. <laughs> so, it's just one of them. What I've done is I've gone in with a cotton bud and whatnot, and just cleaned up all the graphic equaliser sliders, gone through the volume controller again, and uh, yeah, just cleaned up what I could in it. Maybe it was that, maybe there was still a bit of dirt somewhere that was affecting it on the volume slider or something, because it did seem that it was a bit temperamental now that I think about it and, uh, yeah. so I'm a happy chappy also in here I took all my cars off of that and put my tapes on it I thought you know I've got my records where they're meant to be now with a record player they're actually got somewhere to be stored I thought well it would make sense to put all my tapes next to it as well. So, I did. <clears throat> and I've even got a whole selection of now that's what I call music tapes up here. Look. So I do like to try and get hold of these where I can. I'm actually missing some from now volume 2. Which seems to be spread over four tapes. Because it's got volume 1, 2, 3 and 4 written on the tapes. In fact, I've got three spare volume 2's here. Look. Volume 2, Volume 2, Side 1, Side 2, Ooh. Side 1, Side 2, <laughs> yeah, there should be Side 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 I believe, something like that, no, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six. yeah, just four, um, 4 tapes in there, I've also added some cards on here just to display some, so, I'm happy with that. That's uh, a nice addition, I think. But it does mean I've got all of them there now without a home. <laughs> yeah, never mind. I will think of something. Those ones are not staying there. I'll just put them there to take a photo because I've got a nice white surface to take photos on now. Those ones around the base of the TV, they're going to stay there. Uh... I'm just thinking, I don't think I've missed anything. Um, other than that, I've not really done anything in any of the other rooms. Don't you even bloody think about it, Windows 10. Another time, I'll do that later, not now. Right. Yeah, but I have planned that once I've had a look around the charity shops in the morning, I'm going to come home and blitz the kitchen. So I'm going to have to do Nemo's cat tray as well. It's starting to pong a bit. You know, I figured this kitchen needs a bloody good clean up as well. There's some stuff that can be ditched like that old radio. But I do want a radio like that to go in the lounge by the uh, computer desk so uh, I am looking out for one there we 
we go. That feels better. <laughs> yeah, so that's a job. If I don't decide to go down to my mum's, then I'll stay here and sort that out. Oh, I've got a pile of records there that I want to go through as well. There's no sleeves for them, and I can't remember where I've got them from, but I don't know what's in this pile. It's just a pile of black discs. Should we have a quick look? RCA. Top one's very dusty. Have a look. What is that one? South Pacific, made in Great Britain. An original soundtrack. Don't think I'm gonna be wanting that one. Telefunken. Oh, that's a name I haven't seen for a long time. Around the world with Klaus Wunderlich. Wunderlich? Golden Guinea. Let's dance to hits of the boys. <laughs> I might just keep that one just for the shits and giggles of it. What's this one? It's got CBS on it, bloody hell. Our greatest hits. It's got Strass on it. I don't know. RCA Victor. Despite not being in the sleeves, these actually don't look in too bad condition to be honest. Some of mine that are actually in the sleeves look a lot worse. Are these 33 and a third speed? Oh, 1965. My tummy is making some very weird noises. <laughs> Side Why is that sound bloody? No, I can't find the speed on some of these. They're probably all 33 and a third. I don't think I've got any 78s to be honest. Alright. Oh, that's what I might do. I might stop off in the um, community shop in the morning and uh, have a look in their record tubs. I've got a couple of tubs in there full of records. But, uh, it's just nice to stick one on now and again and listen to it. Same with the tape. I haven't got the radio set up on this because I haven't got an antenna. <laughs> um, I was going to do that today, but... It wasn't until I just now looked at it and thought, oh yeah, I haven't set the antenna up yet, have I? So I can't get any radio stations on it at the minute. Oh, and one of the other jobs I've got to do over here is um, put this up on the wall, my Ethernet hub. You know, I want to have at least a couple of Ethernet cables running down there and think the TV is actually a smart TV. Not that I've ever used those features, so I'm pretty certain that's got a Ethernet socket on the back, and I know the Xbox 360 has for Xbox Live, so don't even know if that's still a thing. And uh, yeah, I'd go for it. What if I've still got my big silver Ethernet switch, or if I got rid of it? I can't remember now. Oh. I should actually wire all those up now. Now I've got that, I could have an old disco. <laughs> have the disco going. Right. Yeah, I really don't think there's anything else. Oh yeah, now that I've had the smart meter for a few weeks, it's actually working pretty great. I'm pretty pleased with it, to be honest. I'm turn this light off now, can't I know that I'm not in there. Alright then. I think I might play some Grand Theft Auto for a little while. 
Yeah, I can't update you on anything in here. The only thing I can update you on is the fact I've got a different stereo in here. I had a change. The other one is in the outside closet in storage because I want to keep that one. I wasn't going to, but I do like that one too much to get rid of it. I could have got a Sony system the other day, but I thought, do I need one? I've, I've, I've got enough. <laughs> right. Oh, your bottle's down here. That's all right. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I will uh, talk to you again soon. Bye.